All the NFL head coaching hires are done as Dan Quinn is the last to be hired. There was a report yesterday by Diana Rossini that the commanders, before they pulled the trigger on Dan Quinn, maybe back-channeled to see gauge Bill Belichick's interest, that there was interest in the front office. But this is a team that has a front office that's already full. And then you have Belichick, who reportedly said to the Falcons he wanted to have total control, and then they backed away. Bill Belichick going to the commanders where he's not going to have full control and you already have like three or four front office people already hired. That was not going to work well. Dan Quinn is an uninspiring hire here. And you hire somebody because you want that coach to be your forever coach. This kind of feels like you're on your third marriage and you go, you know, I'm going to make this one work here. Now you got new ownership there with Washington but we, Dan Quinn was in Atlanta where he did go to a Super Bowl. And uh, he was defensive coordinator with the Cowboys. Uh, spent time in Seattle. All right, so he's got a, a nice resume. But if you said I can have Dan Quinn or Mike Vrabel, I'm going to take Mike Vrabel. But Dan Quinn is going to be the uh, head coach there. And I think he got it because others turned that job down, which is fine. You want to be a head coach. And if I'm the seventh choice, I still got the head coaching job. It just, it, it was less than inspiring. And, and what is the new trend? So you have Pete Carroll, Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick not coaching this year. And it feels like you're looking for the guy who's around 28 years, 29, 30 years of age, you know, physically fit and is reading a playbook out of Tony Robbins' motivational uh, speeches where they go in there and they tell you that this is the way it's going to be and we're going to, who's with me? And they look great and they're in shape, but can you coach? And Mike McDonald did a great job with Baltimore. Okay. Uh, it just felt like all of that, and that's what Washington got. New ownership there. You got the second pick in the draft. Why do I want a defensive coordinator as my head coach when I'm going to draft a quarterback with the number two pick in the draft? I don't understand that. That's where I need somebody who's going to be able to develop him. And Dan Quinn is a defensive-minded guy. But uh, Paulie sent me the uh, actual Diana Rossini tweet. During the hiring process, Bill Belichick was considered for the job, per sources. Commanders spoke with him, and he had support from some decisions uh, decision makers. In the end, Dan Quinn is their choice. Okay. Now... You can speak to Bill, but you didn't interview him, which is interesting. But also, there's a real good chance Bill Belichick does not coach again in the NFL. He's going to be one year older. He'll be 70, what, 73 with next year's hiring uh, process? Correct. He would be 73 when the following NFL season started. Yeah. So, and what team is going to relinquish control? And he's not your forever coach. How long is he going to coach? Now, I thought Philadelphia, if they were going to make a change, that Bill would have been the guy. you got a respected front office guy, Howie Roseman, and Bill going in there and maybe revitalizing that team that went to the Super Bowl the previous year needs maybe a change in culture. Maybe Mike McCarthy with the Cowboys, although I just I don't see that happening. I don't, even though Jerry can love Bill Belichick and respect him and say all those nice things, you still got to make it work on a daily basis. And I, I had my doubts about that happening. Now, as far as Philadelphia, I could see that. But other than that, what team is going to say, now we bring in Bill Belichick? And I'm really curious about that. Because I don't know if you can go, yeah, that'll make sense. But, but we don't know. There'll be coaching vacancies that right now we're not able to handicap. But there'll be a job opening. And then now does Bill Belichick say, I don't need control? Let me just coach. Is he going to have to sacrifice a little bit here? And that might be the case, but still, you want to hire somebody who is young. You want to get them before somebody else gets them. Nobody wanted Bill Belichick, at least what came with Bill Belichick. So the greatest coach of all time, nobody wanted him. Now, Arthur Blank, I think, wanted him in Atlanta, but the front office didn't because they were going to lose their jobs. Or we have to turn over the authority to Bill Belichick. And they didn't want to do that, obviously. So he's maybe going into TV. Mike Vrabel, I was really surprised. 
Brable was the guy where it was like, oh, he's going to get a job tomorrow if he wants one. There'll be a line out the door waiting for him. And then all of a sudden there wasn't. Pete Carroll, once again, age, that'll be a factor. Pete and Bill around the same age. Is Pete your forever coach? And the answer is no. You're looking for a Mike Tomlin. You're looking for somebody, I got 15 years, 17 years, 20 years. Like, that is your goal. The question is, can you find that guy? And that's and sometimes we'll look at a hire and go, Mike McDaniel? That guy? He's kind of funny and quirky. He was on the Niners staff. All right. Like, you just kind of go, uh, all right. And then all of a sudden you go, all right, all right, I get it. Yeah, all right, there's a, there's a genius in there. Offensive-minded guy, it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's really like, all right, I like, I like what we're doing here, too. Really? And that's how I felt with Dan Quinn. I don't know Dan. I'm sure, he's a wonderful guy. But I go, okay, all right. Yeah, more. Do you think it's hard for players to look at a guy that looks like he's never played football? Even though a lot of these coaches, they're short, they're kind of scrawny, but they probably played some type of football. Do you think it's hard for them to receive somebody like he's 5'8", 150? Ding. Right. Um, I, I don't know what sport it matters most that you played the game uh, and having that respect. It, it feels like in basketball, it, it feels like David Blatt, you know, there were certain coaches where it, it just didn't feel like they had respect because, well, what have you done? Uh, Lawrence Frank, you know, where you go, really? Where is Ty Lu? He at least played. And, and, you know, even Chuck Daly. Chuck Daly built a resume with Detroit. But, you know, Chuck Daly wasn't an NBA player. Uh, Pat Riley played. You know, there's just certain guys where you go, okay, you got a little cachet there. But I don't know which sport where you go, like baseball. Does anybody check the resume of Tony La Russa's playing career? Or Tommy Lasorda's playing career? Terry Francona's playing career? No. They didn't. Or they don't. It doesn't matter. Like Tommy Lasorda was not a good pitcher, but he was a pitcher. <laughs> How can he give advice to a pitcher? But it feels like in basketball, you know, we need some credibility out here. You know, uh, Spolstra, when LeBron was down there, I don't know if he had the uh, full support of LeBron and company, but he earned it. Yeah, Paul. If you look at NFL head coaches, I don't know if there's a head coach who never played football. A lot of these guys, like Dan Quinn was a linebacker at Salisbury State. Mike McDaniel was a four-string wide receiver at Yale. You know, they don't look like they played necessarily – but, you know, guys like Joe Gibbs played small-town football. I think Nick Saban was Kent State defensive back. They all played at some level. I can't imagine a, an NFL coach not having reps. But I don't know, does it matter in the NBA that, you know, Doc Rivers played? Uh, Mike Budenholzer didn't. Greg Popovich didn't play. I don't, you know, I don't know how much that matters to these players. It feels like in the NBA it matters more than it would in, in some of the other sports.